What's up guys, Shane here from 3 3D Printing. Today we're going to talk about the challenges of printing with a large nozzle. And for example, I'm going to be using my AlphaWise U10. Welcome back guys. So I did a video, I think back in December, of when I went ahead and put a Titan extruder and a volcano nozzle here on the AlphaWise U10. Now this has a brand new different extruder carriage on here and whatnot, but I also want to talk a little bit about just this printer in general, what I've had to do to kind of get it printing a little bit better. It's still not perfect, but I'm on the right path. So I have a bunch of different prints here and several different filaments that I was trying out and kind of working through things. And I was noticing a little bit of wobble and the one eccentric nut on this uh, carriage was not enough to actually get everything intact. So I put another one on top, it's a little crooked. So the nozzle's not quite perfectly perpendicular. It's a little bit cantered. I'm not noticing too big of a difference with that, but it's just, it's a little bit off. Maybe if I put another one on this side, but the carriage on this, Honestly, it kind of sucks. So, I mean, this printer is not fantastic, but it is a great use for a large nozzle because it is 400 by 400 by 500 millimeters. This is an enormous build size. So it really makes sense to use a larger diameter nozzle. Now, I was having issues with this extruder originally, uh, but I just did not have things tuned quite well enough. And I went ahead and tuned E-steps a little bit more. I calibrated my temperature a little bit more and found that in order to print at 40 millimeters a second, I needed to have standard PLA at 230 centigrade. For the first layer though, I had to do it at 210 or 215 because it's going slower. So you can print at that lower temperature as it's only doing, I think 40 or 50% of the 40%. So doing 20 millimeters a second, roughly on that first layer. But because it was so hot, I was getting kind of that wiggle effect of where filament goes down and kind of just, it's so, it's just so liquid at that time almost. So the viscosity of it is so low. You know, getting these ripples through the first layer. So I turned that first layer temperature down and we were off to the races getting pretty good first layers. So my first first layers was this. And you can see it's not really, um, great. I mean, the, the paths are all too far apart and like that. And that's where you really got to go back to my video of how to tune your first layers of 5.3D. So I went and did that. And then I was getting much, much better first layers. So this one right here shows how it's a little bit too hot in there. So that's why you kind of get that rippling throughout there. That's not very good. You don't really want that. This one was the same thing. It's a little easier to see. This definitely had that rippling as well. This one was a little bit better. We still had a little bit of rippling, but I was definitely getting improved. And then here is pretty much the best one I had. I was able to get that pretty flat. So that worked out much better. Now I'm using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on this printer and I tried using bigger, but I think the, this Titan extruder clone that I'm using, it just can't keep up. It does not do a good job whatsoever. So I think if I was to order a legit one or to get a better clone or maybe get like TH3Ds, that might end up being a little bit better for me. But for right now, uh, it'll do with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I'm getting decent results. And I have a bunch of calibration cubes that I had printed here and a few different PLAs to try out. The orange actually turned out to be the best filament for the best um, at 230. This one from, uh, this mint is from filament one and it doesn't, it worked out pretty good on smaller printers, but for this larger printer, not so much at the larger diameter. It's just, there's a little inconsistencies. And again, I can't tell if it's just this crummy extruder or if it's the filament, the filament printed great when I kind of reviewed it. Y looks great. X is kind of eh, and uh, it does pretty good top layers. I also try to do a, one of these kind of torture cubes on here at, uh, 0 0.32 millimeter layer heights and it, it, it's super hairy so I ended up just stopping it because it was just not that great didn't really work out I'll try doing a vase this is at 0.4 millimeters As you can see it's pretty good there's a little bit of inconsistencies in it uh, I think this one I was actually putting a little too fast for it and a little too hot so I actually started burning some of the filament there's just little black parts here and there in there but overall I was happy that I was able to get it done the first layer is yeah but we were getting somewhere. I did start printing the 3D fill, which I've actually never printed before. And he was going great, uh, except for uh, I ended up putting in a roll of Maker Geeks filament and I turned the temperature up to 250, but it's still jammed. I mean, that filament, again, it's hit and miss. This roll that I grabbed is kind of junk. So it's just what I had laying around. I was trying to just use it up. I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna print this really hot anyways. I don't really care about quality of the filament. This should be all right. No, so I think it's just, 
that filament not being so great using a crummy extruder, again, kind of was up for fail. And I did have um, an under extruded part earlier, but I don't think it was under extruded. I think it was just the, um, the temperature was too low because down here, I can actually pull it right apart. And up here, uh, I can do it up here as well. And that is just, I was, this was actually printed much lower. This whole thing was printed slower, but only at 210 degrees centigrade. And that is just too cold for these large layer heights. It's a 0.4 millimeter layer height to actually bond those layers together. It's just too cold. So for me, I found the happy place of about 230 to 240 degrees for PLA at 40 to 50 millimeters a second. That ended up kind of being the best combination. So once I'd kind of figured out all of that, I started printing a couple of the benchies and you saw the bottom layer, the orange one, it was fantastic. And I actually posted this up on the form, up on Twitter. And it, again, this one turned to be great. Top layers were not perfect. So I did have a little bit of improvement to do there. So I went ahead and printed it out again using the filament one mint filament and this ended up being much better i get still good walls here i was able to get the top a little bit better a little stringy so i was a little off my temperature here but i was able to get the top layers filled in it's still a little bit of blips here and there but at least the smokestack finish it didn't finish on the orange i don't know why it didn't finish but kind of going through there and then my final test print was this giant gnome hat <laughs> this is 100 percent scale i did start printing it a little bit bigger but it didn't work out so well so uh, but I was able to print this at 0.32, yeah, 0.32 millimeter layer height, uh, three perimeters, zero infill, zero bottom layers, and uh, two top layers. I did have a little bit of issues on the very top because the layers are so big. So there is this like weird under extruded kind of part there. But yeah, I mean, you can see it just kind of under extruded in there. Or wasn't really under extruded, it's just that the layers couldn't adhere to it well enough. And I think it was just because Someone said you should put some uh, top layers in there, like this last bit, like 10%, you should actually put in some infill in there so it can start kind of bridging it across. And that way this has something to build on. Didn't really listen to that. Uh, but overall, I mean, I'm happy that it finished. That was kind of my big thing. It's just getting this to finish and print decently. Now, let's talk about how I was able to get all of this done. This printer is massive. Leveling the bed is kind of crummy. It's not really great. Um, the printer's not well built. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put on a TH3D Easy ABL version three that like really solves the problem of dealing with the bed being uneven. Yes, it has dual Z's, but it's just, it's not the greatest thing ever made. I think if I was able to get a 2040 for the X bar and then get a new carriage made for it, and then be able to remake this uh, right side gantry because it actually, um, this inner wheel doesn't even come in contact with the 2040 here. Uh, there are no eccentric nuts on it whatsoever. And actually right now, only the, only the top wheel is in contact. It's, it's just not great. It really isn't. So I think dual Z end stops for this would be a good start. And remaking this carriage would also be a good start as well. Now with the easy ABL on there, I'm going to want to route my cable down. It comes down to here. It has this, I'm actually using the easy connect. So basically it's just a power connector. You can use any five volt uh, DC barrel uh, power converter to go into there, but it, the kit actually comes with a little piece of two strand or, or a little two wire black and red that you can tie directly to your power supply. I'm sorry, it's 12 volt, not five volt, uh, a little a 12 volt power supply. You can run that directly off of your power supply and then you can go ahead and run your end stop. I did have to modify my end stop because the one I had originally for this machine wasn't working, it was giving me problems, so I switched it out for a GTEC one, which has a kind of crummy connector and the connectors on this don't really match up so well. I just grabbed uh, another three pin end stop and put it on and it wasn't working because the five volt rail was still connected. Once I took out the five volt rail cable, the end stop worked perfectly or the, the easy ABL was able to power up and work perfectly the way it should have. So calibration was easy. I ended up changing his default three by three grid to a seven by seven grid. So leveling this takes about a minute, minute and 10, 12 seconds. Like it's really not that long to do the 12, the, the seven by seven grid. It really doesn't take that long, but it ends up getting me a much better uh, level on the bed. The glass seems to be generally flat. 
Um, I have no real way to get like another big hunking piece of glass for this. Kind of wish I did. Um, maybe I'll try and look online and see if I can find someplace that will sell me like a real thick piece of borcelli glass for this. Because the bed's so big, it takes forever to heat up. So I generally only print PLA at 50 centigrade. And in order to keep it on there, I use this bottle Magi Goo, which has been lasting me like two years. Like this stuff lasts forever. Uh, and even once you put it on and you heat the bed back up, it gets tacky again, which is really nice. So I'll heat this bed up. This will get tacky and then I can start printing right again with it without a problem. So I generally like that. So it actually ends up lasting a lot longer than most people think. This was a 50 mil bottle and I probably have almost half of it left. So basically the moral of the story is there is no moral. Uh, I kind of just wanted to give an update on what I'm trying to figure out and working with other people and just trying to get this machine to be a little bit more than what it is. This was one of the early versions when 3D printers were just starting to finally expand and get huge. I think I received this over a year and a half ago is when I actually first received this. I have new bearing uh, holders up top, which yes, you can go without them or with them, but because these, these uh, lead screws are so long, they do need a little bit of support up top. And because the actual um, Z gantry is such a thin sheet metal, it's not really that sturdy. That's just kind of how it is for that. I will hopefully get some type of new uh, right side for this, or I should say uh, left side for that, and get that replaced with some eccentric nuts to kind of make that so it hugs in there better. I'll look online for some odds and see if anybody has created any remixes or anything for this to be able to do that. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the results I'm getting. I I think a little bit more tuning and I'll be able to get some great large layer prints and that way I can kind of test out a filament for okay it's great if it can print at 0.2 millimeter layer height but how does it print at 0.4 or 0.6 or 0.8 you know that's kind of what I would love to see or do and be able to knock out huge products like this like this would have taken like 30 hours on any of my other large format printers with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a 0.6 at 0.4 millimeter layer height uh, it, again 12 hours pretty quick for such a large print. I mean, it is absolutely solid. 230 degrees centigrade really made this one absolutely solid print with three walls. So I was very, very pleased with that. And again, all these cubes and everything I've been testing, you know, speeds are really what you have to worry about when you do go up to a larger nozzle size because you're gonna be extruding more plastic. It takes longer to melt that plastic, so you can't print as fast. Generally speaking, they say if you go from 0.4 down to 0.6, you're gonna drop your speed by half, roughly. These are all rough numbers, and it's different for every single machine and every single person's setup. Different extruders, again, I gotta get a new extruder on this thing. But overall, I'm pleased with the results I'm getting. I think it's a good place to kind of wrap up and get moving on this. It's gonna go back up on the shelf and I'll be able to tune it some more from there. But it's been down here for the past few days just so I could just dedicate a bunch of time to just working on this. So I'm pretty happy with that. That has not been recording this entire time. So I'm going to, have to redo those close ups. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you found this a little bit useful. You know, uh, if you're going to be able to go to a bigger nozzle or just kind of the challenges that come with it, it's never a slap on and just print. It almost never is. It does take a bit of tuning in your slicer, depending on which one you're using, whether you're using Spy 3D, Prusa Slicer, Cura, they all take a little bit of tuning. And every different filament takes a different tuning. Again, I'm using three different filaments here and getting different results from all of them just on temperature, especially at these higher temperatures with larger layer heights. Generally speaking, with 0.2 in a layer height, within five degrees, you're good to go. This, you're, you're down to the single degree to be able to get the just perfect looking layers. So again, I'll have a little bit more tuning to do on this, but I wanted to give an update on this. So thank you guys for watching, and I might do another video once I get this finally fully tuned, maybe modified and whatnot, just to kind of show my ongoing experience with this large format printer, because I want to be able to print big things quickly and easily. So that's my whole goal with working with this printer specifically because it's the largest one that I have. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to stay tuned what's going on, make sure that subscribe button. If you guys want to help out, work on projects, I can buy things for the channel. You can become a patron. Do me a dollar more, get you access to the Patreon feed in the after show. And I appreciate every single one of my patrons for helping me out every single month. Other ways you can help out, there's some one-time donation links or some affiliate links with some uh, discount codes down in the video description. Check all those out. I appreciate you guys doing that. And if you just watch this video, you're awesome too. Thank you guys for watching. Happy Christmas.